What's up, everybody? It's another episode of the Built Different Podcast. Always, always, Ricky Alfonso, CEO of Extropian. Um, have Sean, our COO, data scientist uh, Justin Kim on here. Uh, and Raul's gracing us with his presence from the, uh, behind the scenes today. So thank you, Raul, for hopping on. Um, today, we want to talk about uh, consumer electronics and like their influence on uh, each of us and kind of, you know, the advancements they've made and how they made uh, people's lives easier. Um, you know, obviously, we have a technology company, and that's our goal as well is to, uh, you know, help people be the best version of themselves, as we always say, but also just, you know, make life easier and advance humanity through the, their use of technology. So with that being said, I think one of the biggest things is, and this is a debate we always get into, um, cell phones you know the cell phone industry obviously you had you know kind of started off with the uh i guess you know you had the uh f house phones obviously you know and those went through their iterations also too you went through uh you know mobile communication so you had you know beepers then you have big you know zach morris from saved by the bell cell phones uh and car phones and then eventually we got to our cell phones which you know I can't imagine any of us. Uh, I guess you guys would all agree. You can't imagine living without it, could you? No, not so. At all. No. With that being said, um, we wanted to talk a little bit about the advances of, of uh, cell phone technology and you know the influence and the impact it's had on our lives. So, Sean, starting with you, what's um, you know, what's what if you uh, you know, you pretty much grew up with cell phones, I'm sure. Um, but what did, what how has it impacted your life, and what do you see? Um, what have you seen as far as the advancements and how it's helped people out? Yeah, um, I mean, I got my first cell phone, I think, in middle school, um, which is pretty typical these days, maybe even earlier for some families and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I, my first cell phone was some kind of flip phone, I think, and then... I think I had like the Samsung Galaxy S2 or the the S3 that was like a screen and then you flip it open and it has a little keyboard. So like it started with like that and then, you know, worked up to the Galaxy and then now I've kind of switched over to iPhone, aka the dark side. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't imagine a life without cell phones. I... I feel like, you know, I'm on my cell phone a fair amount. Um, it, it gives you easy access to the internet, easy communication with people. Like, I, I can't imagine what it was like having, like, communication with people, like, 50 years ago, where it's like, oh, you wanted to see if, like, your friend's free? Like, oh, like, go walk over to his house and find out. Like, you can't call him, you can't, like... You could write them a letter or something, but like that'll get there in like seven days. Um, so, I I am a big big fan of you know the advances in technology and the advances in cell phones specifically. Um, and yeah, I I agree that I wouldn't know what my life would be like without it. So, what about uh, Justin? What about you? Um. I think my first cell phone that I got, I couldn't remember the name. I was I, When I found out we were doing this podcast, I wanted to see what the name was, but I couldn't remember. I was trying to Google it and stuff, but I remember it was like this really cheap AT&T phone. It was like kind of a touchscreen. <laughs> yeah, it was like a touchscreen phone, but it wasn't like an iPhone. I don't even know like what you would call it now, but I remember like I had to like the, to use, there was no like apps, like Facebook apps. It was just like an internet app and you had to use that to go on all the websites. <laughs> And it was so mm -hmm. slow. The camera was like, compared to now, it was like the worst thing that you could possibly have. <laughs> but I remember back then thinking it was the greatest thing in the entire world. And then my friends started getting iPhones and stuff. And I was like, damn, this thing sucks. <laughs> but, but now, you know, I've been on the iPhone train pretty much ever since my like sophomore year of high school. And I mean, yeah, I don't really know what I would do without my phone nowadays. It's it's like more valuable more valuable to me than like my computer sometimes. Like I I can do like pretty much any social media website. I can talk to anyone I need to. I can do my emails. I can take pictures. I mean, I whenever like I go places and stuff, like I love taking pictures and stuff. And it's crazy how good the cameras have gotten on, on iPhones nowadays. Even like editing photos, it like it, make, it makes it look so much better. So it's it's really kind of become like the ultimate tool nowadays with compared to you know 
before, like in my sister's era, where she had like a she had like a phone, but then she had like a like an actual camera and stuff. Like she had all the different things like separate, but now it's all kind of gotten condensed into one phone. So it is kind of crazy just to see how like consolidated cell phones have made our our lives. I guess you know. Yeah, there's, there's even a word for it. Uh, media, media convergence, the idea that all media is kind of piling into this one thing and we're going to consume it all sort of very similar ways. So it ends up being on one device. Um, like Justin says, everything gets combined into one thing. You don't have a tape recorder or like a phone, a camera and, Absolutely. you know, a la- and a cell phone, a flip phone and, you know, all these things separately, an iPod. Instead, you have a, a smartphone, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I so I I agree with everything you guys are saying. It's just made life easier. It's made business easier. Um, you mean there's no really no reason why you can't uh, conduct business like 24 hours a day. Um, even traveling, it's made it easier to do business and to to reach loved ones, to entertain yourself, to um, just communicate. So it's it's a blessing. But I would say one thing is like, you know, I've always been an early adopter of technology. That's why I obviously love having a technology company because I've always, you know, looked for the coolest and most innovative products and tried to, you know, I've been excited by them to buy them, to look at the packaging, to, you know, test them out. And that's obviously, you know, kind of why I have this phone, you know what I mean? Um, Cause this was, I, you know, I checked for this for a long time and obviously it flips closed, but um, you know, I, I followed the path that they were taking in developing it. And so, um, you know, I was one of the first with like a note, a galaxy note and people kind of made fun of me at that time. Cause they're like, Oh, you carry this big old thing in your, your pocket. And, and, and a couple of years later, everybody had it, you know what I mean? Um, and then phones have gotten bigger and bigger. So, you know, I've always kind of been ahead of the curve when it came to buying technology and, and being one of the first to get it, um, the newer things. But, uh, you know, I'll say this, um, you know, even with all of our phones now is that, um, yeah, this is just going to get better and better. You know what I mean? It's just going to um, become more and more advanced. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't even use computers anymore. They use their cell phones now rather than even having a desktop or a laptop. Um, you know, like my phone now, it's like a tablet as well. So there's no need, you know, for a tablet as well. So it's just versatility. Um you know, in my case, flexibility. Um, and just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I can't, I, you know, I I don't know how anybody could go backwards. You know what I mean? I, I think, um, you know, the future of it's going to be even crazier. Um, what you know. you think, what's like for you, like, what do you look for in a phone? Like if you had to start over again, what do you think are the thing, the key things that you would look for in a phone or like a the deal breakers, like if it doesn't have this and you wouldn't deal with, you wouldn't ever buy that particular phone. I think number one, if it doesn't have like good screen real estate, like I can't stand looking at a, a tiny screen. It's just, uh, I can never go backwards. Um, you know, ease of use, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. And then also too, because I have bought like advanced phones from, from uh, Asia or whatever, you know what I mean? Korea or, um, you know, I've, I've imported them over and they just don't work properly on our, um, on our networks. So it's gotta, you know, it's gotta work and function smoothly and it's gotta, you know, allow me to do what I need to do and not drop calls and things like that. But I think battery life is a big thing as well. You know, just a great yeah. battery life. Um, cause I remember, I remember back in the day, like going on vacation and having when we used to have, um, you know, the removable batteries. I remember, I'd buy like two or three extra batteries if I was going to be out all day and just carry them in my pocket and change them out. You know, um, those are like Vegas days. You know what I mean? You go out all day and yeah. go out at night and then change the battery at night. So th- those are some of the things. And um, I, like I said, I think it's just going to get better. You know, um, 6G, I don't know, you know, they're running studies on that right now, but I don't know what, you know, I know there's might be some environmental things. I'm not sure, but, um, you know, allegedly the, the thing they're trying to do is, uh, through our networks and through the, through the, uh, the data transfer, like charging our devices rather than us actually having to plug them in, you know, crazy things like that are uh, things that they've talked about. I don't know if they're feasible for G, uh, 6G, but, um, you know, things like that, I think are going to be really cool and really crazy in the future. 
whenever you have that phone, like the one that yours does, where it opens up like that, does that like, when you have that big of a screen, uh, screen size, do you think you could ever go back to just like an iPhone size? Or is that just like, once you go, once you go to that big of a screen, it's just, it feels weird to have anything else. Um, for me personally, I, I mean, could I go back and still function? Yeah. Would I want to? I don't know. Like I, I enjoy having this and even sending emails, even if I got to do like a, uh, you know, this, uh, podcast, I could do it on that phone pretty easily, you know? And, um, yeah, it's just, it would just be difficult for me, but, you know, I, I don't know, like, you know, I'm, I'm on the Samsung train, but no, I appreciate iPhone because they pushed, you know, they pushed the boundaries back before them. It was like, touch screen really weren't a thing. There was a few, but, you know, they consolidated all of the technologies that we needed into one, you know what I mean? People used to carry, like you said, the system, multiple devices, a Walkman or CD player, um, a separate camera, uh, you know, a phone, you know what I mean? And so you had all of these devices and they integrated all into one and with a, a easy to use uh, interface and, you know, change the game. And that's why, you know, everybody else followed up after that. So. People, uh, you know, uh, got to thank iPhone. Pe people also forget that, like, when when the original iPhone came out in 07, that was really the first time most people had seen a capacitive touchscreen, which is yes. uh, different from the resistive touchscreens. Without over explaining it, we all know those plastic, you know, like the car touchscreens or the Nintendo DS touchscreens, where you have to mm -hmm. press hard to in order to make an input. Those were the touchscreens that existed before uh, iPhone. Um, Multi-touch was originally uh, exclusive to the iPhone at one point. Um, you guys can, you know, we can even, I'll, I'll try to link it in the description, but um, there's even a moment in the original iPhone presentation when Steve Jobs, uh, you know, pinches to zoom. Pinches zoom. And yeah. you can hear the audience gasp. Uh, I can take any of these pictures and uh, I can make them bigger. And uh, so let me go ahead and get the camera back up. Yeah, there it is right there. I can, uh, I can just take my fingers and I can, we call it the pinch. I can bring them closer together or move them further apart to make it bigger or smaller. And so I can just move them further apart and stretch the image. Isn't that cool? And move it around. Isn't that cool? And now, now what I can do is I can uh, pick to uh, make this my uh, wallpaper. And of course I could, you know, jigger it around then and just set the wallpaper. And now, when I, uh, if I'm back at home and I go to sleep, when I wake up from here on out, till I reset it, that's my wallpaper. Whenever I'm making a call, that's what I'm going to see. Boom. There we go. So photos, SMS, and the phone app. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So pe people do forget, that, like, I, it's been less than 20 years and, and these things are normal to us now, you know, well, yeah. of course you interact with a, with a photo that way. Why wouldn't you, you know, that's how it was built from the ground up, but someone essentially decided that the best way to manipulate a touchscreen is as if it was a piece of paper in front of your desk. If you want to read the bottom, you push the paper up from you, right? Things like that. Yeah. These, yeah. these, these basics, they didn't exist before. Yeah, and I would say the same for music as well, because you did have the iPods, you know what I mean? And then everybody's like, oh, you know, everybody wanted an iPod. And then, I, you know, I even thought about getting an iPod. And then um, next thing you know, there was, uh, you know, it's on your phone. So you don't need the damn iPod anymore. You just, you know, seeing the music and the titles and the artists and everything as you scrolled your finger along and just seeing how... Uh, intuitive it was and seeing you know the, the the kind of somewhat it was clear back then obviously not resolution isn't the same as it is now but seeing the all the albums that you loved and the artists and all like the classic music you like listening to like just at the touch of your finger just scrolling through like that that's what got me with the iphone seeing that like i remember i remember watching the presentation and being like Man, this is crazy. Like I was oh, like, cover it, flow, my, cover flow my head exploded. The cover flow, yeah, and just the um, the way you turn, the way you turned off the phone and you turned yeah. it on, like with the, like the swipe. Like man, it was it was wild. It was wild. I remember watching that presentation and then going online and uh, reading every article I could find about um, the iPhone and how it worked and everything like that. And I followed it very closely after that, you know. And 
it was it was a game changer, man. Like things were never the same again after that. And, and, and we can't. Basic, oh, sorry. Basic, oh, yeah, the basic like phone apps that came with the iPhone. It was just like a lighter app. You just press it and just. Like, yeah, the beer, like, the beer oh. drinking app with the accelerometer. Yeah. We right. were just like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it it forced the um, it forced the uh, you know, like app developers to you know start making things. After that point, apps started flying. You know, app, app development started going uh, ridiculously fast. The pace of um, app development got quicker and just all these various apps and people, you know, opened up uh, opportunities for people in, in uh, technology to build things and to create, um, you know, it, like we started off the conversation, just make things to make people's lives easier. And that's, you know, the iPhone helped usher that in. Like, you know what I mean? It, people started saying, hey, like, wouldn't it be easier to, instead of, uh, you know, mm -hmm having to look up like things in, you know, in the phone book or something, you know, you did all of the list of everything would be there, like Angie's list or, you know, app for that, or I don't know, so many different things to, to even uh, reserve things or, you know, it just, it started that trend. And uh, I mean, we kind of take it for granted now, like the apps that we have and how easy, like everything is like one touch away from us, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, like you would identify that you just have the lighter app. You still have to do so many things, maybe call a restaurant or whatever the hell. Now it's just, let me click this one button. Okay, I'm good, you know? You remember the yeah. era of experience that had like the stylus, the little like pen that they gave you? Yeah. Oh, those were um, not Nokia's, uh, Palm Pilots. Palm Prees. Palm, Palm Pilots were like blackberries like blackberries were like the official like business like if you you were uh official business like or tech person if you had a a blackberry like that was like you were you were balling back then if you had a, a blackberry i remember on the blackberries they had this they had one game and it was called like brick breaker and it was oh, just a little God. game where you have the thing you try to shoot the i used to play i would my cousins had the blackberry and i would just take it and play that game for hours <laughs> I yeah, love. man, it's it's um it's wild where cell phones have uh, have gone and where they're gonna go. And I was uh I was in a meeting the other day, and um you know there's things around like predictive texting, like you think it it it, it texts it out. You know, there's there's projects like that right now. So who knows where this is gonna go in the future? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think in terms of where a lot of innovation is happening right now is uh, with Google. I think they mm -hmm. have been an incredible app developer to the Apple ecosystem, and they've managed to create their own eco e ecosystem with Android. And like something that I, I have a Google speaker right next to me and a Google router right next to me. The, the whole natural language thing, right now it's, it's on its way. I think in a few years, it's going to be insane how useful that is. The idea of being able to talk to these devices and get what you want out of them. Be, because you that's my biggest gripe right now is the text and you guys all know like I'll, i think i sent sean a message saying i was like damn it you know because he's like what are you what are you trying to say and it's, it's the predictive tech like the uh, not the predictive texting but the voice texting like that i wish they could improve that like uh if they i'm good with everything else the phone has right now you know what i mean just fix my voice to text like uh, you know it always changes it from it, it puts what I say at first and then automatic. I'm about to hit send and it changes the changes it to something else and it's annoying. <laughs> Don't sleep on a, a Microsoft either as well on route with a chat GPT. And yeah, right now I think right now doing. open AI is is the current it's the bell lab of our generation. Every time they do something, there's articles written about it. You know, they're changing the world mm -hmm. with the things they're doing, hopefully for the better. But there's there's so much going on with that. Like, I don't know if you guys have read about how ChatGPT four is going to be able to intake uh, images and audio and video and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's going to be smarter than ever, basically. And and Bing search is essentially going to have like an AI help you along the way. So there's 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 mm -hmm. a lot that I think AI and natural language are going to provide us, where you're able to either talk to something or type something out and it'll give you essentially what you need, what like whatever that is. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, besides, um, you know, obviously cell phones and everything, um, I think one of the biggest changes has been, you know, television. Uh, you know, I think they 
even more so are, are I would say they've kind of hit a, a plateau now as far as resolution, you know, obviously, you know, they've gotten smaller, thinner, um, you know, you have 4K, 8K's out there, 8K's been out for a little while, but, um, you know, what are your guys' thoughts on, on the way television has changed and even the, uh, you know, the clarity of the, the picture, the smoothness of the picture and, and how that's translated to like um, watching your favorite shows and even sports? Um, Justin, how, how's that uh, for you? I think the biggest thing that I've noticed just from girl, like as I've gotten older is just how much like slimmer the TVs have gotten. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first moved into, we moved into our house, we had this big TV, but it was, it looked very wide, uh, big, but when you looked at it on the side, it was massive. I don't even know how they carried yeah. it in the house, to be honest with you. It's so big. <laughs> yeah. But then like, it's just like, as the years go by, they've gotten like slimmer and slimmer. And now like I can, I, when I was in, uh, moving into my apartment and stuff, I have like a small, uh, small TV now that I can carry with one hand. It's, it's crazy how mm -hmm. like very they've become more and more compart uh, compartmentalized you know like they're not as bulky as they used to be and i think the computer that, or the tv that i have now is way better than what i had you know 15 years ago when i was bigger and stuff and so yeah it's just it's, it's remarkable to me how like things are getting bigger and or, uh, better but they're getting smaller you know they're getting cheaper yeah. exactly yeah yeah go ahead Sean. yeah i mean for TVs, I think now what needs to happen is some of the, you know, different shows and uh, broadcasting things kind of need to catch up to the TVs because the TVs mm -hmm. can do 4K, most of the new ones at least. And some can even do 8K, like you said. But can these, you know, whatever shows or broadcasts, can they keep up? Can they film these things in 8K or 4K even? Um because I do my when we my family just got a new TV about a year ago and it was like exactly what Justin was talking about switching from kind of like the TV that's like like that thick to like one that's like that thick and it was uh, a huge difference and like you know if you watch any kind of like crazy like nature video or any kind of like you know 4K like flight through the jungle type of thing. Like, mm -hmm. the picture quality was unreal compared to mm -hmm. what it was before. Um, but I still send, I still seem to have issues with TVs. Like, they, I don't know if it's just, you know, some of the ones that are out right now, but um, it, my every TV that I've had always seems to malfunction and, like, it'll turn off randomly or, you know, like, the picture will kind of, like, go dark out of nowhere and it's, like, I don't understand why there's still those kind of issues nowadays with how technology has become so advanced. Yeah. Raul, did you have anything on, on TVs, your experience? like? Um... Yeah, yeah. I, I would say probably the biggest thing that I've noticed uh, in sort of like growing up in the you know section of time that I grew up in is with HDMI becoming a little bit more standardized, with TVs becoming way bigger, way cheaper, and with streaming becoming a thing, you could you can invest a couple hundred bucks into a, a, a soundbar with a subwoofer and a little streaming box like an Apple TV, mm -hmm. and and you have a home theater system like something that in the early two thousands or in the late nineties was thousands of dollars to set up a mm -hmm. couple of days of your time you know like it was it was like this whole thing to get surround sound and if you were the mm -hmm. house with surround sound you know the games were at your place right the, yeah. the pay-per-view fights were at your place the movie nights were at your place now basically all of my techie friends have a respectable like kind of like sound and audio setup and video setup in their living room because it's not that expensive anymore to have you know dolby atmos in your living room, you know, you can feel the theater sort of, so to speak at home. And I, and I think that that's indicative of maybe where the market's going, where, yeah. you know, these movies, they're made for the theater, but really they're, they're made for your living room, you know? And, and I think more and more, we're going to start seeing that. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I remember going into like all the family members' houses and um, they had the big wooden, like heavy TVs. I remember having to help people receiver move those box things. underneath. Yeah, it was like the it had the dial on the front of it, and then it, you know they'd have the antennas in the back of it, that, and like a, a TV hanger. You know what I mean? To to so you could get the uh, the uh, better signal. Um, so yeah, th there was those days, and then there was the. Um, the projection TVs, which are the kind of ones I think Justin was talking about, that were, they look small from the front, you know, and the screen was huge, but they were, you turned to the side and they were huge. Right. Um, all hell, I would, all hell to move. I used to hate when people, you know, um, had those TVs in the house and they didn't get rid of them and, you know, you'd have to help them move and carry them big old things. Um, but yeah, they, uh, you know, Televisions have uh, advanced. The one gripe I would have with today's TVs, though, Raul, is the fact that you kind of have to buy buy a sound system to use the flat screens. You know, their their profile so thin, and you know they try and keep them as light as possible. That you cannot, um, you know, they don't produce very good sound. Um, they don't. You kind of have to buy that sound bar. There's a few out there that have found, you know, a way to make some better sound. I think there was some Sony TVs that had actual panels on the side that were speakers but yeah that, that'll be my one gripe with the tvs today and um i think sean pointed out another gripe i have i have i kept direct tv for a specific reason because they were the one um you know they were one provider that had uh 4k content and they promised all these 4k channels and and they do show sports every once in a while on the 4k channel if it's the super bowl they might show it if it's um you know NBA games or big hockey games, big MLB games, they'll show in the World Cup, they showed in 4K. But yeah, the broadcast networks never really got onto it. And I think that's why streaming, you know, took over a little bit because they do stream uh, in 4K, not enough, in my opinion. Um, especially 8K is on the horizon. They should be pushing 4K a, a lot harder to um, start building towards 8K. But um, no, it's, it's, it's crazy how much smaller they've gotten and thinner and just the ability to hang it on your wall as well now as opposed to having it on your floor or something like that i mean just opens up so much space and i've uh i, I like minimalists as far uh, i'm a minimalist as far as um decoration and decor and i don't want anything crowding my floor or anything like that so the i think one of the biggest things for me is just being able to have this thing on your wall um, almost like a portrait in many instances is uh great how do you guys feel about the tvs nowadays that are curved have you seen? Have any of you seen them? I have one. Well, how do you I feel you, about that? I'm I'm mixed feelings on it right now. You've been to my house. I should have shown it to you, but um, it is doesn't really. It makes no difference at the end of the day. Like you get used to it, and it's just it's really nothing. You know what I mean? Like even I'll go down. I'll go downstairs and watch it right now, and I'm not like, oh, that TV. The, the screen is curved. This and then you know come up here and watch a TV up here and like, oh, like it, it's really, really no huge difference, to be honest. Do you feel like it cuts off any, like, the range of the, like, viewer at all? Like, do you, like, do you have to be sitting more centralized to see it properly? Um, not from my experience, no. It's, it's weird. Next time you come over, you have to watch it and see if you notice anything different. But, um, no, I've never noticed anything. There's... One thing I'll say too is that uh, projectors are getting smaller and, and cheaper as well. So a lot of people have like the 120 inch projectors or they have the, the floor mounted ones that project up. Um, so that, that's, you know, another avenue. I'm obviously like, I like big phones and screens. I like big TV screens as well. So the bigger, the better there, you know, I've seen a Sony, like a, no, it was a, I forget what, what it was. I think a Samsung hundred inch the other day. I'm like, damn, how nice with that? Cause it's just like, you know, I want to watch sports and everything and fights on the, the biggest screen possible. You know what I mean? Like I want the people to be as big as me and just walk, you know, as the bigger the screen, the better. So, you know, they're doing a good job with that now. And like you said, Raul, the prices are going down, um, but you know, they just need to push some more innovation in the television sector as well. I, guess, I think, uh, Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. I was just going to say, like, I guess related to TVs, it's kind of like, it's crazy to think about like how stream how far streaming has come to. Like you can at this yeah. point now, like with like Netflix and Amazon Prime and all these different uh subscription based pl uh uh pl platforms and stuff, 
Like, I still remember going to Blockbuster with my dad, like, in middle school and thinking that was, like, the best thing ever. Just, like, yeah. all, all the choices and stuff. And now it's, like, you don't even, you don't need any of that stuff. You literally just need, like, a TV. And then, like, I have my Xbox to, for all the apps and stuff. It's, it's I don't know. It's just crazy to think about. I miss those days. <laughs> I miss Blockbuster. Yeah. Well, the crazy story is the Netflix um, offering their services, I think, to Blockbuster for I forget how many billion. And Blockbuster basically laughing them yeah. off. And uh, yeah, now you see where that went. And I saw something the other day where um, somebody posted something. I guess a guy was writing a book about it. And Blockbuster, I guess, has a Twitter account, which is shocking. And they were like, they said, oh, well, Blockbuster could never, what they say? Blockbuster never made bad movies, though. Like trying to talk um, trash to Netflix and it was like it's some. It was like a back and forth confrontation. I thought that was funny. I'm like, damn, Blockbuster has a Twitter account. Um, but yeah, Blockbuster. There was like um, ten thousand movies. I think was another one. And then um, obviously after that was uh, what was the things out in front of like the stores and stuff like that. The uh, what was that called? Redbox. I think. Redbox. Redbox. Yeah. There you go. You could get games and stuff. And yeah, it's kind of crazy how things have changed. You don't even need the. Uh, a disc anymore, you know what I mean? <clears throat> Some kids probably gonna be listening to this, laughing his ass off, like, "What is a disc?" You know, like it's, it's crazy. I, yeah, I remember GameFly. I used to play games a lot, and they used to yeah, play. GameFly. <laughs> I was I use that stuff all the time, and now, now it's just like I don't even need that anymore. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so you know, television. You know, obviously, you know, those are gonna keep advancing, and hopefully, like you know. 4K is like pretty much, I think everybody's got a 4K TV now. Time to push the 8K now um, and get, you know, I just want sharper images, cleaner looks, smoother frame rates, you know, those, I get kind of geeked out with all the, the new technology and TVs, but it's gotten kind of eh, stagnated for a while. So it's not really anything out there that's been like a monumental shift in, in what's available. So I think what's coming next now that sort of the size of the TVs and the resolutions have really been conquered is mm -hmm. uh, lighting. So HDR content, having like yeah. uh, more more control in how bright maybe one corner of the screen gets and how dark the other corner of the screen gets in a scene. Um, and then the other thing that people are really looking at is uh, bit rate for streaming video. So this is a weird one, but I wanted to bring it up because, because you guys were talking about streaming. Um, 4K streaming doesn't look as good as a 4K Blu-ray. We, someone like me, yeah. honestly can barely tell, but there is a big enough difference in the color, in how it looks, and how it ends up sort of like the final product ends up feeling. So what a lot of people are looking at as the next step is higher bitrate video. Like YouTube is gonna, uh, I think they're selling higher bit bitrate 4K video so it'll look better to you on the other side. So it's like, there's these little changes that like, they're not, they're not huge. They're not like going from a big TV to a flat screen or something like that. You know, it's, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if those, if that's how TVs are going to work anymore, but they, they're still working on a, some little things here and there. Right. It's just, but I, I agree with Ricky that, you know, they're, they're not maybe making the big changes they used to. So that's, that's what I think is like, would be the next cool thing is and i've heard people talk about working on something similar like this similar to, similar to this is almost having like that projection image like a think of like star wars you know like uh you know leia calling out to yeah like the hologram technology where the you know you can see things in front of you almost and then that's why i think ar vr and everything is gonna could have an element of taking um Placing, taking, replacing things in the household because if you can see things with a, a different from a different depth perception and it feels like it's right there in your living room, I think obviously that's the next step in in home entertainment is being in, in television and everything is being able to watch your programs where you feel like you're in the environment that the show is taking place in. You know what I mean? Like you're you're right there, you're in the scene. I think that's that's obviously where things have to go now. I think we've like things have stagnated from a um, technology perspective of uh, the resolution and how sharp these images can be. You can refine those and fine tune it slightly, but I think the next 
evolution is feeling like you're part of the part of the uh the broadcast and, and you're right there with the uh the actors and actresses actor and actresses the the nba is doing that right where you're able to actually be in like a simulated stand yeah they have the vr where you're like in the front row and you can see things they have it i've seen it um i've seen boxing videos too where um there's some companies out there that do do that so you're actually sitting there in the in the room um i wonder if like ar might be more of a thing where it's like you aren't wearing maybe the equipment as much as possible, but there's some way to project the characters onto your living room floor somehow. You know what I mean? Just that's where I think this, it would need to go to be an evolution, to be go from like the big screen, big heavy boxes to the flat screen to this is now the new way to, um, to be entertained at home. So with that being said, um, I think the last thing we wanted to touch on was um, something obviously that's kind of near and dear to us, but wearable technology, you know, um, wearable technology, you know, obviously like with the, you know, home consumers, you have the, uh, you know, you have, you know, the Echo, um, Amazon Echo, you have things like that um to interact with the, that i wanted to mention as well that we all kind of have in our houses echo and uh, google uh, i forget what google's um version is called but um but wearables is the last thing we actually want to touch on um so i think each one of us has had some type of a wearable at some point in time that um alerts us to things and gives us some you know some information on on uh what we're doing and how we're functioning so I know Sean, for instance, has the i uh, the uh, Apple Watch, and uh, you know, just tell us a little bit about your experience. What was it like prior to having one, and what is it like now having one? How has it made your life more convenient? Yeah, um, I think it's definitely made my life a little bit better. Um, I would say one of the best things that I've experienced with it is just like now that i can see my you know like like i can track exercises see how many like hours i stood for see how many steps i took in a day how many calories and stuff i'm burning mm -hmm. it make it motivates me a little bit more to actually get outside and do stuff as opposed to just mm -hmm. like sitting on the couch all day um because when it like alerts me every hour like hey you haven't gotten up off the couch this hour that's not <laughs> very like nice so I'm like, okay, I should get up and like go move around. Um, and, you know, other than that, I, I do like, you know, from a smartwatch perspective that like uh, it syncs up with my phone. And so I can, you know, see everything on my phone as well. I can uh, be alerted when I get a text message, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think the smartwatches in general, you know, just being able to going from something that used to just be able to tell time to now being able to get data from it and get, you know, track actual like things that I'm doing within my life. That is a huge increase to me because I was never really a, a watch person per se. Like I never really wanted to wear a watch or a Rolex or anything like that. Um, but um, I do think that there's uh some bonuses to to the newer stuff out there. Okay. Justin, how about you? Do you own an Apple Watch or any type of other wearable technology? Have you utilized it at all in jiu-jitsu, for instance, or any of the, the you know, sports that you played? Um, no, I don't own any, like, uh, any of the wearables nowadays. My, uh, my mom has a, has a, um, a couple of different ones. I think she had an Apple Watch for a little while, and then she had a I think it's called a Garmin, and uh, they're pretty different. They're they're cool, like the different um, biometrics that they track and stuff. The different uh, like she can track like her sleep and stuff, which is they're they're cool and and um, whenever she shows it to me, like the different things that they do. But for like for like jujitsu or for things like that, it's not really like any device that I would feel comfortable wearing while rolling. You know, I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah. And, you can hurt someone or hurt yourself, you know? Like, yeah, I don't want to spend four hundred dollars on a device and then it just breaks <laughs> the first time I wear it while I'm rolling or something. Or, you know? or your or your opponent get you submit your opponent by the finger getting stuck in the 
If only there was a wearable that moved with you. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, just, you know. Anyway, I can't say more. <laughs> uh, how about yourself? How about yourself, bro? Well, I, so I, I have a Fitbit. Um, and I would say that in general, kind of the, the angle that I really see wearables is from like a health perspective. They're pretty cool. Like, um, without sort of over explaining, it's uh, pretty cool that I can have my heart rate, sort of access to my heart rate, make sure that it's at a reasonable level. And uh, I think another good example of wearables in sort of my life is uh, my mom's hearing aids. So she, I think she listened to too much disco back in the day, but uh, she, <laughs> <laughs> she cannot hear too well anymore. And she has these crazy advanced hearing aids that they serve like regular hearing aids, but they also connect to her phone and she can use them like AirPods. She watches TV with them. She connects them to her Roku. She watches, you know, she watches mm -hmm. like, you know, reality TV with them or whatever. Um, so it's this sort of situation where more than ever, these hearing aids are, are genuinely like a tech wearable. They're, they're not, they're, they're somewhere between a medical device and what we understand as, a, as like an electronic wearable. So it's really cool where things are going there. Um, Fitbit's all right, though. I'm not going to compliment them that well. <laughs> um, for myself, I've never owned one, you know. Um, I'm not, I don't really like wearing watches unless it's like in a business setting with a suit or something like that. So it's never been comfortable for me. And then sleeping with one on is going to feel a little awkward to me as well because I just, I don't know, feel would feel a little restrictive um, in my opinion. But, um, you know, obviously I think they're cool. You know, they kind of paved the way for um, companies like ours to, uh, you know, much like Apple, we talked about, you know, the cell phones needing an advancement and we're talking about all these other industries needing an advancement. Like, you know, if there was no, uh, you know, what I equated to is if there was no uh, Model T, you know, Elon Musk, well, I won't even go a step further saying flying cars, you know, that he's, these flying cars that they're making. Um, that's kind of the, the steps that we want to take with wearables from, from that level to, to something that um, people only imagine at this point in time, flying cars, even though they're kind of starting to become developed. But yeah, I, so, you know, I think I was close to buying one um, recently. I was like, you know what, screw that. I'm going to use what we have. Like it was like added emphasis to get it done so I could use our technology to, um, to get my data and to really get a, a, you know, a good track on what I'm doing in the gym and, you know, how, I'm, how I am physiologically, um, you know, how my physiological responses are and, and everything like that. So, but, um, you know, thank, thank goodness for wearables. They've done a lot um, for a lot of people and, um, you know, it's just industry like much like, uh, you know, television and everything that's ripe for advancement. So um, I don't know, any, any thoughts on that, Sean or Justin? Or I agree. Um, I, I definitely think that what we're coming up with and, you know, I'm very hopeful that all of our listeners who, who listen to us loyally will be able to see it in the near future. Um, I think we're really going to change the game with regards to, you know, um, we've mentioned a couple different wearable technologies, um, in the past few minutes, but, uh, like just like Justin said, having one that will move with you that will not get in the way of things is a big, big uh, reason why I think that we're kind of taking this next step. And um, like Ricky said, you know, sleeping with a watch on is not comfortable. I don't, even though my my smartwatch can do sleep tracking, I don't use it for that because I would like get annoyed and it would hit me and I'd be like, what the hell? Why is this piece of metal hitting me? Um, and I, I really think that that's kind of where we can fit into this, this market. Um, and I'm very excited for everyone to see it soon. What about you, Justin? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, we've been working on this now for, for a long time, this, this device that we still haven't shown anyone yet, but I think especially for like, you know, we talk about like combat sports athletes and stuff. It's, I think it's going to be a huge game changer, you know, like there's a whole side of like the training that I feel like most athletes don't really get the chance to measure themselves just because if there's no 
device that, that that they can wear at the same time everything is so bulky and just it doesn't feel natural even like uh <clears throat> like Astato mentioned a couple weeks ago, he was saying everything's too bulky and that there's not a good method for, for uh, boxers to, uh, to wear. And there's nothing good for boxers to wear while uh, while training. So I feel like what we what we have, what we what we've been working on, can uh, finally be the answer to that. You know. Yeah, Raul, I don't know if you had any any thoughts on it for. No, no, just uh, I'm excited to see where wearables go. Um, I think. Something really important is not only the form factor, but what companies do with that data, you know, keeping it safe mm -hmm. and also doing something uh, valuable with it, being able to give the the athlete, you know, something back, whether it be sleep tracking or whether it be activity tracking, you know, what, what have you, but uh, finding new ways to to give insights with that data. Yeah, and to kind of close it out, yeah, we... You know, we, I feel like a lot of the technology now, you know, it helps people maintain, it, you know, helps, it, it gives people observations, but, you know, I believe our technology is going to be the one that helps people push through, you know, um, you know, we're not just about simple maintenance. We're not just about, you know, ensuring like, you know, everything's all right. No, we want you to truly be the, like the best version of yourself. And that's, you know, through the use of the device, through the, the data that we produce, um, through the insights, we want to personalize it like nothing else out there, like make it actual, make it actually relevant for yourself, not uh, a metric that's uh, based on, you know, other people's uh, measurements from other people, you know what I mean? We really want people to have a, a you know, individual, you know, a relationship with the technology as an individual, you know? And um, that comes through, like I said, the user experience and through, you know, personalized data. And we want to, you know, give people insights that they never had before. And that's why I think, you know, we're going, to, we are going to be that next step um, beyond what's out there right now. Um, as, you know, one of our advisors said, it's, it's beyond wearable. And um, it truly is. And that's, you know, one of the most exciting things. So while, you know, I've been an old, early adopter of all this technology and excited to, you know, use the newest thing and the latest thing, I'm like, it's going to be dope using the latest, craziest thing that, you know, our company develops. And, um, you know, that's going to be my first actual probably wearable that I use. Um, and I'm, I'm just excited. We're excited to show it to everybody and inching closer and closer to revealing it. And um, I think everybody's going to be excited about it. So uh, with that being said, you know, we wanted to close out as always. Thank everybody for their time. Thank you for, um, you know, listening to us. You know, we've seeing the, the numbers going up, uh, more, you know, we're reaching more people, reaching more ears, um, you know, still would like to see some people making some comments, um, you know, following us on our socials, which Raul's always gracious enough to link. And yeah, just become a part of this movement. If you, you know, you want to see a change in technology and, and, you know, an advancement that's gonna, you know, you believe is gonna help you be the best version of yourself and you're, you're looking to break barriers, you know, reach out to us and be a part of our community and, um, you know, listen to our podcast, share it with every, everybody. And yeah, again, thank you for your listen. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys have a blessed week and, uh, for Justin, for Raul, for Sean and myself, you know, thank you for joining us on this episode again. And uh, we look forward to talking to you guys next week. Thank you.